I'm not sure if you guys had a chance to watch the Argentina versus France World Cup final game this morning, but that was absolutely insane. Like, I'm still trying to emotionally recover on what just happened. Like the entire game, I was like, France, you're looking a little hypotensive. <laughs> Give them a vasopressor or something. Seriously, the reason why I'm so behind in the renal block is because of this World Cup. <laughs> All right. So this video is going to be on the health makeathon slash hackathon that happened a couple weeks ago now on the weekend of, I believe, December 3rd. And so this competition is hosted by Carl Illinois College of Medicine, as well as UIUC that is focused on developing and designing innovative solutions at the intersection of health, tech and engineering. And so this competition is open to students both at the Granger College of Engineering over at UIUC as well as the Computer Science Department and the Geist School of Business students as well as Carl Illinois College of Medicine students and Carl resident physicians. And I remember hearing about this hackathon competition type thing many months ago, maybe a year ago when I was applying to medical school and I distinctly remember telling myself, oh wow, that composition seems pretty interesting and fun. And maybe one day I will compete in a competition like that. So I did vlog the event and in this video, you're gonna see the footage that I collected. And what's kind of funny is that I woke up that morning and I asked myself, do I feel like vlogging today? I don't know, I'm a little bit lazy to, you know, charge the camera, get it together. And then it's sort of, when you film events, it sort of detracts away from you being present in the moment because you're so focused on filming. And so there was a split second where I almost decided to not film, but then for some reason I decided to film it. And I'm actually really glad that I ended up vlogging everything because this day ended up being one of the most memorable experiences that I've had in medical school so far. And yeah, I'm just really excited that I could share this with you guys. So the day of the competition, everyone arrives. Sure, you wanna be in my vlog? Like, yeah, I'll be part of it. All right, where are we at right now? We're at MSB at the Makeathon. Yes. It's uh, 8 in the morning on a Saturday. <laughs> Bright and early. Bright and early. It's cold outside. Uh -huh. It's so cold. My face froze on the way over here. Yeah, my neck was uh, freezing. You know, all the stylo hyaluron. <laughs> the stylo hyaluron. <laughs> and your Milo hyaluron. I could feel every individual one. Every. <laughs> That's cool. Are you excited? I'm very excited. Okay, it's always very exciting this fall um, health makeup, right? Because again, we kind of see this as a moment. When you are working together. If I'm going to uh, introduce our first speaker, uh, I really appreciate uh, the honor to be here and uh, be with this exciting. <laughs> I wish we had uh, courses like this when I was in school way long ago. But very quickly, I mean, everyone knows what BCs do and think what BCs do, but from the inside, we BCs think it's a bigger scale. What I mean by that is, uh, you know, somewhat uh, facetiously. Our job is to go back investors for money, then back smart entrepreneurs to take up. What do we look for, right? There is no simple answer. Those key markets are people based on necessarily our market basis. But at the same time, it is more important that we trust them with the money and no need for that. And then you gather into teams. So everyone should find their team and kind of join one of those back tables. Are you on the winning team or the losing team? We'll see, you know, we'll try our best. <laughs> and so clinicians, uh, physicians, people in medicine prior to the event came up with questions in medicine that they would like solved that they think can be solved with engineering or tech. As you know, this has been going on for several years. Uh, I think this year, we're looking forward to it. There's a lot of ideas on the table, very meaningful, come from experienced clinicians and we hope people enjoy sort of engaging with those ideas and coming up with uh, uh, projects and uh, uh, hopefully 
again, take to those ideas beyond uh, today. And so the teams will then rank the 10 clinical problems according to the preference that they would like to solve. And the coordinators of the event tried to assign tasks or problems to the teams according to their ranking system so that we, they could give the teams a chance to work on problems that they were more interested in. The way pro problem selection will work is we'll give you a sheet that includes all the problems we'll have you rank each of the problems in the order from one to ten. And so I showed up to the event and I don't know some of the people on my team, right? Because I've never met some of these students before. And so I met with my team members for the first time. And then we picked out of the 10 clinical problems, our top two. And so we ranked those as number one, number two, and then everything else we just ranked like number three to 10. But we, we knew we wanted to work on the first problem simply because it was really challenging and it was just, it was just interesting. And honestly, we didn't know anything about it, but it just sounded interesting. So we're like, okay, we're gonna do this one. And then after the teams were assigned the clinical problem, all of us dispersed into our separate rooms to then brainstorm and come up with solutions for that clinical problem. Ready to go viral? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're here for. We're team yeah. six. We're here for the right reasons. Oh yeah, what team are you? What number are you? We're right next to you. Oh really? <laughs> Shoot! And then later on in the day, we were given access to the Maker Lab and then all the resources, like if you wanted to 3D print stuff, you could go do that. You had access to all of the building tools in case you wanted to build a prototype. And then at the very end of the day, each of the team had to give a final pitch or presentation on the proposed solution in front of a panel of judges that they called the Dolphin Tank, which I thought was, um very oceanic. They they did provide free food. If I'm being 100% transparent, that was one of the major incentives for me to sign up for this event. Hey, hey I, I got food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, anyway, just came I'm putting ahead. me on the spot. We'll actually, have, we'll actually have extra. Yeah, yeah, hey, Michael. Hey, Salad dressing. Okay, something that was super cool that happened at this event was that I met some subscribers. So I'm at the event, right? And we have name tags. And I'm wearing a name tag that says my name, Megan Amber. And I'm walking around with my camera filming, you know, annoying people as usual. And I leave the auditorium and this student comes up to me and introduces himself. He's like, hey, my name is blank and I am a current bioengineering undergrad student at UIUC and I saw your name tag and your name sounded really familiar and I saw your camera and I was like wait is this the same girl that I was watching the YouTube videos of for bioengineering and Genentech internships and I was like oh yeah that that is me that <laughs> but to talk about something even more coincidental was that a couple months ago, this student messaged me on Instagram and she said that, oh, hi, Megan, uh, I watched your YouTube videos on bioengineering and I'm currently an entering freshman at UIUC studying bioengineering. And it's just such a coincidence that you also too now happen to be on the campus of UIUC. And I remember I responded back and I said, oh, wow, that's awesome. Maybe I'll see you around. And then that was it. That was the end of the conversation. And that was several months ago, like in June. And then the day of the competition, I show up to the event, right? And one of the people on my team was that same girl who messaged me on Instagram a couple months ago. And what's so funny is that I went the whole day not realizing that girl was the one who messaged me on Instagram. And I didn't realize it was the same person until like three weeks after the event when I'm sitting there just ruminating on life, you know? And I was like, wait, that name sounds so familiar. Cause she has the same name as me. Like her name was Megan. And I'm like, wait, I recognize that last name from somewhere. And I run through my Instagram messages and I realize it's the same person who was on my team at the event. That was super cool because I got to work with her throughout the event. Please like, don't give me chicken wings either. That's something that I don't want to publish. You know? Okay, try to hide my horrible <laughs> self-tan. <laughs> You're so
so I'm like, <laughs> funny. Are we still going? We're just taking pictures. <laughs> oh, wait, can I do this? My father died, <laughs> am I 70? <laughs> Should I like, should we do an acting chat of me opening it like? <laughs> She's the one for action, like I said, I do still fights. I just want to say that I had an amazing time working with the people on my team. The four other team members were so hardworking and just so invested in working on this problem. And I was just so proud that these students showed up and gave it their all. Yeah, I mean, Everett's kind of like this a little, like those private study rooms. The only thing I would do if I was a bit Okay, so along the lines of who's on my team to compete at this event, around a month before the actual competition, I asked one of my friends if she would like to compete with me at this competition. Because the coordinators let each of the competitors designate if there's anyone that they would like to prioritize or they would prefer to have on their team. And so I asked my friend and she says, yes, she would like to. And so we sign up for the event together. You know, we submit our interest form and we designate each other to be on the same team and then around a week before the actual competition we're really excited because we are matched on the same team and hence we can compete together that Saturday and so fast forward to the day right before the event and I'm in bed taking a nap no surprise there and I wake up to a text from my friend and it says that she will no longer be competing in the event. And here's the thing, if she had dropped out earlier and not the day right before the event, we could have had another student who wanted to compete take her spot and be the substitute for her. And in that case, our team would not have lost a member. We wouldn't be down one more team member. Now, I just wanna pause briefly here because I think this is a great opportunity for a lesson. 5% of life is the events that happen to us. And the other 95% is how we choose to respond to those events. In that split moment when I read her text that she had dropped out on me the day before, there was a part of me that just wanted to just give up, you know, like just not show up. But then there was the other part of me that was like, there are other people on my team where if I don't show up for these people, then I would be letting down the other members on my team. And I don't even know who they are, right? Because all the teams are randomized. I don't know, I don't have any personal connection to who these people are. But then in that moment, I responded back and I said, okay, that's fine, but I am still going. Upon reflection of this event, one of the major takeaways that I had, like even beyond the competition, beyond the clinical problems and solutions that we encountered, is that in life, we're always going to be presented with situations and circumstances that are far from perfect, that are not ideal, where all the cards will be stacked against you, where people will disappoint you, where people will not show up. But the most important thing is that amidst all this noise is focus. If you remain focused on what you want, then it doesn't matter what situation you're placed in, what cloud of noise that you walk into. If you can filter out all that noise and remain focused on what you want, then you will come out on top. Where's the hype crew? Where's the hype crew? I'm so stoked. <laughs> okay, so a little more context on the clinical problem that we were given. And so this was a problem that was developed by someone over at Mayo Clinic. And our problem focused on this condition called hydrocephalus. So essentially hydrocephalus is a buildup of fluid in the ventricles of the brain. And how neurosurgeons approach resolving this condition is by implanting a shunt in the head that will then drain the fluid out of the head. And the problem with these shunts is that they oftentimes fail and it's difficult for neurosurgeons to monitor whether or not the shunt is working properly or not and so the goal was to develop some sort of device or system that will monitor the flow of fluid through the shunt <laughs> it's hard to get there but yeah it's Exactly. All right, would you, well, you guys don't mind being in it, right? Mm. Okay. I, I don't. Wait, well, Tommy, does my hair look okay? You guys want to introduce I, yourselves? I, and go you to see like UC Berkeley? Okay. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> channel. 
Hey, Priya. Hi. What are you working on today? Um, we're at the Makeathon. We're working on our project, which Megan is trying to steal our idea. That's why she's in this room. <laughs> we're not right going to talk about the project idea. Yeah, we're not, don't yeah. look at the screen. Or the yeah. I, haven't oh, I haven't looked. I haven't looked. I was actually, I was watching her eyes when she walked in the room. Yeah, yeah. I know. And, like, no, and she passed. She passed the exam. I passed the pass. Don't worry. I, I, I win with honor. Oh, I'm Walker, <laughs> uh, undergrad at U of I in biology. Nice. We're all juniors. Except Chris, the med students. Juniors. Except for the med yeah. students. Yeah, I'm Chris. I also do YouTube. Tech and more. Tech, everyone, follow Tech and more. <laughs> all right, here's the, the guy who saved me in the anatomy practical you know, Dennis yesterday. Dennis I saved Megan in her anatomy practical. <laughs> I'm Yash. I'm a junior bioengineer. Hello, I'm Zara, and I'm also a junior in bioengineering, and I also hope to go to med school. Nice. She bunch of nerds in this room. She's she, our carry. She just follows me around. She just follows me around. <laughs> from CEO and co-founder of AI Nexus Healthcare. Dr. Khan Sadiqi, he's a serial entrepreneur. And I'm really excited to see all of this as a fellow engineer. It's really exciting to see what's been happening in this space. Great, thank you. Okay, the floor is yours. Let us know you're ready. Hello, we're Team One. Uh, our project is called YANA, which stands for You Are Not Alone. Uh, special thanks to Dr. James Basante for coming up with this awesome prompt. And uh, we wanted to look more deeply into what is causing the specific overdose that's occurring. And so but in the end, when we create this wearable device, the hope is that we... So that brings us into our software. This is an example of the UI that we developed. Um, this is the home screen where you can navigate to different options. Um, um, completely inaccurate because it took too long to get downstairs to the lab and become hemolyzed. Inpatient patients to decrease cost and delays in health. Um, <laughs> inside the, the chest, we have uh, two EKG leads on both sides of the chest. And then on top of those, we have accelerometers so we can actually detect the a mobile app, which would have a nicer. Uh, Set the site what we are feeling right now. So that still has to be a component. And uh, this is important because when you're doing cutting procedures, you're introducing uh, synthetic. Um, we're just so very proud of all of you. I, I tell you, the discussions, the ideas, the creativity, your collaboration was just phenomenal. So ironically, I filmed every other team, but our presentation, I think I was so focused on not forgetting to go up and present that I didn't click record on my camera. But we ended up winning, uh, and the first place prize was five thousand dollars. The first prize for five thousand dollars goes to Team Six. Yeah. you take it. I think one of the most memorable things for me from this event was when after we won and received the award, the other students and my team told me that this event made them inspired to continue pursuing bioengineering and continue pursuing solutions at the intersection of science, health, and engineering. You know, that's where the future is headed. And you know, for someone who makes YouTube videos on bioengineering and puts it on the internet, that is my intention in the first place. Like I make all of these videos so that hopefully I can talk to someone who can relate. There's an article that was written on our solution as well as the second and third place prize winner solutions, which I will link down below if you're interested in reading that. But I just wanna say, we're just getting started.
Yeah, I've been missing your skin. 